Welcome back. We're sticking to corporate earnings and another strong set of numbers that we got yesterday was from Capital First. Robust growth in the balance sheet continues and asset quality has shown sequential improvement as well. Vivek Adinath, an executive chairman, Capital First now joins in. Uh, great to have you in the studios, Vedya. And the market was extremely happy with the numbers that were delivered. I want to start off at the top. The growth number itself at 28%, uh, that's a little higher than what most an analysts were penciling in. Where is this growth coming in from? Whom are you primarily lending to? I mean, what are the growth engines now? Okay, uh, actually we had guided beginning of the year for a 25% growth mm. and we are actually surprising ourselves that it's coming higher than expected. Mm. Now, in fact, we are expecting that this will grow to maybe 30 to 35% by end of this financial year. And oh, it's uh, a full year target, 30 to 35%. I mean, growth. we targeted 25, but it looks yeah. like it's coming to 35. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and, and so therefore credit demand is uh, very strongly back. Uh, to give you some numbers, for example, last year, same time, our book was 18,000 crores. Mm. This year, same time, we are uh, in September, we are up to 23,000 crores. So uh, for us, you know, maybe a 26 or a 27,000 crores is a hop, skip and jump mm. you know, by end of this financial year. I'm looking at the breakup. Consumer durable loan growth of 64%, two-wheeler 40%. Uh, I think the uh, SME segment, MSME segment about 20, 22%. Uh, you know, the simplest question up front, a lot of people are wondering whether this can be sustained given that PSU banks would be flush with more capital, so whether they will get aggressive in some of your segments. See, frankly, for a 25% growth is not out of the ordinary at all. Mm -hmm. This is India. Mm -hmm. In India, if it can't grow by 25%, where in the world will we grow? Uh, and as far as the uh, public sector banks coming back in the game, frankly, we're overjoyed. That day, we couldn't f stop feeling excited because uh, if 2 lakh crores more come to the system uh, in the form of loans or whichever way, that will grease the whole economy. And, and, and it's inconceivable that the GDP will come back to, to, to a strong 7-8% growth, but NBOCs will not grow. It has mm -hmm. to grow. Okay, uh, uh, Vaidya, I'll um, approach what normally we don't ask you, uh, NPAs. I mean, it was not ever your problem and actually your gross NPA as a percentage ha has gone down. But uh, just give us a feel of the sector, SMEs and MSME itself. Is it that your due diligence is good, your analytics are working? Or did the market overestimate the pain because of GST and before that demand? I definitely believe market overestimated the pain because when there is an announcement of demonetization happens, this panic and hell breaks loose, people are jammed, people, you know, it's it just people get overly excited one way or the other. Uh, actually, there was no, there was a temporary issue for maybe two or three months. People exchanged their cash, life went on back to normal. So I, I do not say that we are the only GST, people. because even I do not believe that we are, say no, that I do not believe we are the only people doing a very good job in, uh, on, on, uh, on NPS. If you see any large good bank, they're all operating NPS in the range of about 1.5 to 2%. About 1.63, our net NPA is 1%. Of course, we believe we have very good underwriting standards and very careful about credit. But I think it's, it's no, no. Consistent. See, MFIs showed a lot of uh, bad loans MFI, at that time. So we don't know where to place reality. Is yeah. it that SME and MSME went through pain? It went through pain. It went through a two-month sharp pain. But it just came back because they just entered the cash. They didn't become unviable. But microfinance companies faced uh, significant trouble. But I think they too will bounce back. You see the kind of numbers MFIs are posting again. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, let's come down to uh, margins and what to expect from here on. This quarter has been pretty good. But uh, given the way yields are moving, cost of money is moving, uh, what's on the horizon now? Uh, this is uh, not a game of NIMS based on whether five basis points movement upwards. It doesn't matter. Uh, for example, in, in NIMS what is your margin? I mean, it's about eight eight percent or so. So, uh, no, but don't get excited with yeah, 8%. Yeah, the calculated NIM, they said, is 9.8. Yeah, I, I mean, it depends on whether off balance sheet, on balance sheet and all this stuff. But let me say about 8.5%. But, uh, you know, 8.5% on the face of it looks high. Mm -hmm. But I must uh, caution you and, and bring your excitement down by saying that a number of businesses we do have high operating costs, but ticket sales are very low. And uh, also, relatively, credit costs could be relative to the mm -hmm. home loans, so to say, they could be relatively higher. Oh, yeah. So, this is a business where you can anticipate or expect a stable 16 to 20 20% return on equity uh, and, and, a, and a return on assets of about 2.5%. Uh, that is to be uh, safely expected for this business. But and margin, I, that is a steady is state business of uh, wow. situation for the business. But the margin, which is 8.5% as, as of this quarter, how should we expect that number to trend in the second half? You should expect this to be stable. Okay. okay. Now, you said uh, uh, the costs tend to be high in certain loans, but the cost to income ratio generally has come down. So, uh, I mean, obviously you have pursued uh, uh, an, an, an analy analytics course in some loan, uh, uh, some l lending. Can we therefore expect more uh, fall in cost to income? Uh, 
Over time, yes. Okay. Uh, in fact, how is analytics shaping up? Uh, you know, for example, cost income for us has come down just in three years, has come down from 80% to 50%. So it gives you a sense of where the cost income is headed. Now, in terms of analytics is concerned, it is making a big difference, I think, not just for us, I think for the whole system, but certainly we are focused very heavily on that. Okay, and uh, how much of your loan is uh, linked on those parameters? Uh, like close to about 20% uh, or so, and and uh, and that's a growing uh, number. Yeah. And uh, analytics, of course, is creeping into all other parts of the system of as well. But as far as we are concerned, now if you were to guide, let me say, your investors or people who are watching the program, mm. I, I'd say that uh, that a CAGR of 40% has been the CAGR growth for Capital First over the last five to six years in terms of profits. But I think to expect a 30 to 35% growth of this financial year, compounded, uh, is certainly on the cards. Ooh, that's right. breathtaking. Thank you very much, Vaidyanathan, <laughs> for joining us and taking us through your uh, second quarter numbers. Thank you very much. Okay, Thank that's you, a superlative performance uh, in terms of uh, both profit and uh, uh, you know revenue growth that has come in uh, the stock as well uh, compounded what uh, uh, 10 times over the last 5 years so clearly stock market also has uh, rewarded the investors. Okay, let's now look look at the next set of numbers blue